Hey, tell us about your first experience on stage. First experience on stage was awesome. Uh, I had a big group of people go with me. I mean, I was surrounded. Like, we owned that place. Like, what the, was the place? It was Mocha Lux in Arlington. The whole front area was just packed with my friends. Like, we went in there and we just owned it. And I did three pieces. I did, uh, I did. We can check on this later, too. I don't have it on film. That was before I got the camera, but okay. I know I ended with bipolar. I also did deja vu, and I did uh, a day late. Those were the three I did, and I felt good about it. And bipolar, I've done three times on stage. The first one, I was okay with how I did it. The second one, I got cocky, and I just went up there and thought I'd you know show them up. And I'm a smoker, as y'all can tell, and. I was winded halfway through, and I just, I butchered it. And then the third one, which is the one that's on my YouTube page, I feel like I nailed it, but that first night was awesome, because afterwards we all went out and had drinks, and it was just, all my friends coming out to support me doing this for the first time. <clears throat> what happened with Mocha Lux? Mocha Lux will always have a special place in my heart, and I, I just, I don't know, I don't feel like that's, I feel like I've kind of gone past that now. Because it was a coffee shop, and it was just a whole bunch, like, a lot of times there weren't a lot of people there to perform, so it was just, it became a core group of regulars, and we've all heard each other's stuff, and it was, what was funny about it, though, is since a lot of people didn't go there for that reason, they just get, went there to have coffee, they, you just look on in the crowd, and you just see these horrified gasps at the stuff we're saying on stage. But they can't say anything to us because we have a microphone, and that means we're allowed to say whatever we want, which is what I love about open mic nights. No matter how bad you are or whatever, no matter what you're saying, they can't do a damn thing because you have a microphone. And uh, I was always so... like, There's a big difference between doing it in a bar and a coffee house because in a coffee house, you're all jacked up on caffeine, so I was all shaking and stuff and nervous. But that's why I like doing it in bars because you get a little courage in you, liquid courage, and then... Loosens you up a lot more. And What's the new place you go to? New place I go to is Tucker's, Tucker's Blues, and it's it's become my home away from home. Like the people there are so accepting. Like the first time I got off stage, people were when I was going down the stairs, people met me at the stairs to tell me I did a good job. And at Mocha Lux, like it was, it's like they could really care less what you were performing, because it was very Mocha Lux is a very narcissistic environment. Most people just go there just to be on stage. They don't go there to hear other people, and that's the difference. Tucker's Blues, they, it's a blues club. Like, they believe in art, and they like hearing what other people have to say. And they're so supportive of everything you do up there. And I, I look forward to going there every week. And Mocha Lux, I just got burnt out on it because I didn't know what I was doing there anymore because I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere with it. But Tucker's Blues, I've only been there four or five times maybe, and... It just the reception I get from there is so much more heartfelt than anything I got at the other place. It was instead of, hey, hey, good job. The owner Diane, she actually comes up and she tells me lines that stick out to her, and she remembers my work even whenever I hadn't done it in a couple of weeks or a month. She still remembers it, and that's that's what really sticks out with me. She has a passion for what she does. What would you say was the most crushing uh, event of your literary aspirations? I, uh, when I finished writing the book, Scattered Thoughts, not to be confused with the blog, I, um, I had a big head because I wrote a book, you know, look at me, I wrote a book, did you write a book? No, you didn't write a fucking book, I wrote a book, so it made me special. And then I went to this writer's convention, and the only reason I really went there was because there was an age, there were agents there, so if you paid the $150 to get in, which I'm going to pay you back, Amber, by the way, if you ever see this, I'm going to pay you back, uh, the only reason I went was because agents were there and you had, an, you had an opportunity to pitch your book. So I went up there and I was just all excited, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell my book today because it's so awesome, I'm awesome, I'm going to sell this book. And uh, I had my meeting and the agent could just see right through me and see how green I was and how I didn't have confidence in her because I couldn't even speak in front of an agent. He goes, if you can't speak in front of me, how are you going to sell this book? It's like, you're, you're stuttering right now, and you can't even talk to me. How are you going to sell this book if you can't even talk to an agent? And he basically said, uh, he, I remember it vividly, he goes, if you want to help people, go talk in schools. Don't sell a book, go talk in schools. If you want to help people, that's what you need to go do. 
and I thought about that. Like on the way home, I was so angry, I was pissed, and I was like, I'm. He doesn't know what he's talking about, and all this other stuff. And fuck agents, I'm gonna do it on my own. And uh, after a while, I kind of sank in that he was right, cause I didn't know what I was doing. And as far as speaking in schools, a lot of my subject matter I don't really think would go over all well with the teachers. So that's whatever. Or Amber actually uh, suggested I go to open mic nights and try it there. And I haven't looked back since. That was the that was the the catalyst for me to start pursuing this path. So it was like the worst moment that became the best. <laughs>